Uh, good morning. This is Wake Up Nigeria. We still have a fantastic lineup for you to keep you informed and entertained entertain this morning. Yes, we do. So now we'll get to meet and chat with one of Nigeria's most talented dancers. His name is Wale Roba. Mm -hmm. And we mustn't forget that Somkele Iyama Idalama will be joining us for a chat right here in the studio. She will stay with us until she gets back on her feet. I agree to make you happy. If not for her, we wouldn't even be together. Oh, she's God now. No, she's our friend. And we will be giving you tips on how to style your hair. And Fola will be joining us for that later on. So, Mike is on the couch with us today. <laughs> We kind of missed you earlier on. Titi, uh, yeah, on the couch today, After like going all yeah. the place. By the way, okay, now, each of us, let's give horror story in three words. <laughs> horror, horror, horror story. Horror story. In horror three story. Words. Oh, yes. I have a horror story, actually. In three words. No, three words. Three my, words. My feet are swelling. Oh, oh that's horror that's four. Okay. Uh, How's that a horror me? story? Yami, let's oh. go. Because it's hor horrific to me. <laughs> it's let's very go, Yami, let's go. Three Yami? words. Horror story. Um, people are dying. In no, 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 that's, the, no, that's the kind of horror story we're talking about. <laughs> Titi, your horror story. No lights this morning. Ah, that's very close to mine. No, the no, popular one is tomorrow is Monday, but mine was Transformer Don't Blow. Really? <laughs> Yesterday, I got home. <laughs> that's and then I was just words, chilling. Actually, you know, three. Transformer Don't Blow, three. <gasps> and then I just, went, I just went back home okay. and then the Transformer, and then we went, um, a neighbor went to see the electricity power distribution, and they were like, one strike. Oh, wow. Are you kidding? I'm telling you, wow. one strike. It started wow. on Monday, so, and my transformer blue okay uh, so I, i'm in for like some weeks or maybe so months of no power i so yummy you have a like a spare sofa in your <laughs> your house right so mike can come oh, crash yeah. uh -uh. no, no. <laughs> i have to take permission check. and then what? sign an undertaking with my wife <laughs> not, i mean you know, so like I just can't. That no, is man. deep. Can't deal. <laughs> That's deep. So Why you, you might take be, it there? you might be getting a hotel. Uh, you know, uh, really. So one of the anybody want to you know <laughs> take Mike in for the next few days? Know, one of the things you need to know though is that um, usually, even with the transformers, yeah. Yeah. it's the residents that pay. So yeah. oh. yes, at the end of the yeah, day, at the end of the day, once you have your so money, so get ready, yeah. Mike. Get your you get the Nepal guys yeah. who are off duty. That's another horror. That's another horror story. <laughs> residents will pay. Yeah. That's another horror story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking, of, speaking of horror stories, so my phone yesterday oh. dropped on the floor and the screen shattered. Is it this morning? So now you can't see so anything. I can't see anything. I can't hear anything. You can't take selfies. I can't take selfies. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can't do you can't bank. jack. And I'm feeling such pressure right now. I just want to take my phone and look at it. Just, you know, but it just looks I so know, different. You just fixed the screen like a few. Yes. So it's becoming, it's, it's too regular now. Titi, do we have to check your, do we have to wash your hair? Thing. She's addicted I to think selfies. I'm, so I'm she's just someone, always. I always buy affordable phones. Affordable phones. Uh, okay. I don't like to spend too much money on phones. Um, I love gifts that are phones. You know, I'm just going somewhere, <laughs> connecting with you. Anybody want to give me a phone? I won't mind right now. But um, the thing is, the, the, the fact that we rely so much on these devices is a big deal. Mm -hmm. It's a big deal. Once your phone is off, that means you can't have access to your accounts. You can't call an Uber. You can't call home to find out if anything's happening. So it's like, I'm just so connected to this device. But you know what happens? What? You, know you know, happens? when you have kids, sorry, mm -hmm. when you have kids, yeah. the, when, uh, when if, 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 like for example, it's happened yeah. to your phone, mm -hmm. yeah. and someone asks, ah, did what happened to your phone? Yeah. They're like, oh, it cracked, They're like, the kids, right? Yeah, the first thing the that comes kids. to anyone's yeah. mind is the kids, right? And oh. No, maybe me. I'll talk. I'll talk to Dave and well, we'll do something. Yeah. We'll talk about backing up because it's possible that you back up maybe on your Google Drive oh, or something, yeah. yes. so that you can everything from your apps to your documents yes. uh, to your files, everything. That's, a, that's so something we all exactly. So in such a way that you can switch I phones. I know I yeah. can get those things you back, know. but I need a phone first. <laughs> this is where I flutter my eyelashes. I'm sure, I'm sure there are people who are there who uh, would like Yomi, this is to your jump cue on board. to jump in and say, Yomi don't worry, I out. have a backup phone for Yomi you. Yomi has it out. You can't bring it back in. Hook me, your sister, up. We'll put it on social media. Yeah. Hashtag get to, get get it to your phone. To your phone. <laughs> it's the top of the hour and our news anchor, Blessing Idahosa, is on standby for the news.
Hello, good morning. Here are the news making headlines at this hour. President Muhammadu Buhari joined other world leaders who addressed the 72nd session of the United Nations General Assembly this Tuesday. President Buhari raised attention on global topics from migration to gender equality and detention in the Korean Peninsula. He was particularly thankful to the international community for the support in the fight against insurgency in the Lake Chad Basin. He also spoke on North Korea's nuclear program calling on the United Nations Security Council to intervene. Now it appears to be a season of strikes in the country as electricity workers have joined another one started on Monday by the United Labour Congress of Nigeria. Union members walked off their jobs over several issues including government's failure to register the union, the failure to address the challenges of the academic staff union of universities, the state of Nigerian roads and the minimum wage. Union President Joe Ajero is also demanding the immediate payments of all salary arrears owed Nigerian workers at all levels of governments. Well, the People's Democratic Party aspirants in the recent Anambra governorship primaries, Ifani Uba says he is heading to courts to challenge the announcements of Obaze Oseloka as the candidate of the party. He accused the party's leadership of setting the templates for the conduct of corrupt primary elections through the appointment of Eboyi State's Governor Dave Omahi, who disregarded the authentic delegates list from the 326 wards of Anambra State. Uba added that he waited patiently for the party to reach a consensus on complaints by other aspirants, but says with the PDP Anambra Governorship Appeal Committee upholding the outcome of the primaries, he is left with no choice but to head to courts. And Governor Rocha Sokorocha of Imo State says Nigeria is passing through a moment of trial, but the unity of the country is not negotiable, irrespective of tribe or religion. He made this remark during an interactive session with some members of the Northern Governors Forum who paid him solidarity visits. Governor Korocha said Nigerians are one in blood and flesh and as such should work in unity so as to continue to be a leading light to Africa. Enquirer State Governor Abdul Fattah Ahmed says human capital development with education as its catalyst will engender development for Nigeria. The governor stated this while hosting the advisory council of the Sir Ahmadu Bello Memorial Foundation in Ilori. He noted that the ideals of the late Sir Ahmadu Bello are still visible in the north, urging current leaders to take a cue from him. And as a news update for now, we'll bring you the day's weather forecast. Time now for Sports Update with Mike, and he's right here. Yes. Yeah, okay, so let's get straight uh, uh, to it. The Nigerian Professional Football League, NPFL, has ended with Plateau United winning the title. In just their second season in the NPFL, uh, MFM FC finished second and secured a CAFA Champions League ticket. Another new team, Remo Stars, got relegated along with uh, Gombe United. ABSFC and one of the traditional teams of the local league, shooting stars of Ibadan. 2016 champions in the Rangers struggled and managed to survive the drop. Now one of the leading lights of the league, Steven O'Day, left the team uh, twice in search of greener pastures. Former NPFL player Mayuwa Giwa, who plays for Mauritius Club, ASVPFC says as many as half of the players in the league are not owned by the clubs. And the Burkina Faso Football Federation, FBF, has instituted a case with the Court of Arbitration for Sport against FIFA's decision 
to replay the 2018 World Cup qualifier between South Africa and Senegal. Earlier this month, the FIFA committee ruled that the tie will be replayed after CAS upheld the lifetime ban of Ghanaian referee Joseph Lamti for unlawfully influencing the outcome of a South Africa versus Senegal match last November. The FPF uh, regards the decision as abuse of power and relevance as Senegal will replace Burkina Faso at the top of the group if they win the replayed fixture. The replay is scheduled uh, to take place within the November 2017 international window. And former heavyweight champion Tyson Fury has called for a resolution to his doping suspension as he bids to end a near two-year absence from the ring. The 29-year-old boxer has not, fought, uh, has not fought since beating Vladimir Klitschko in November 2015 and cannot return until a UK anti-doping hearing into his ban takes place. Um, you can postpone the hearing in May, scuppering Fury's uh, hopes of a July bout and is yet to announce another date. UCAD, which charged Fury with a doping offence in June 2016, refused to comment on his ongoing case, adding there is no time scale for its investigation. The British Boxing Board of Control said at the time of the postponed hearing in May that Fury's licence was suspended pending further investigation by UCAD into anti-doping and medical issues. He will have to appear before the board to request permission to be allowed to fight again, but it cannot rule on his case until UCAD completes his hearing. Now, during his absence from the sports, Fury has twice claimed he has retired before then deciding to carry on boxing. And uh, of course, uh, at the Burkina Faso Football Federation uh, instituted uh, that uh, case with uh, the Court of Arbitration for Sports. I've spoken about that earlier. But then, um, uh, Yomi, you remember the case, um, you remember when we were talking about that Senegal mm -hmm. um, uh, tie? Yeah. You know, the one with the South African referee mm -hmm. and all that uh, South yeah, African course. match. Yeah. And uh, the Ghanaian referee who was banned and we, we should have been banned right? for life. <laughs> Do you think that punishment, you think it's, it's is, it, is it too much? I think it's too much. Um, because sometimes there are certain people, especially those with experience, that you need their experience still on the field of play. So five to ten years would have been fine. Nah, but I think it, they're trying to set down the marker. It's more or less like he's a scapegoat. You're trying to set down, uh, let's give this thing to him, let's make sure that, okay, we set the marker and he uh, doesn't do this again. Okay, so anyway, all right, that's it on sports. Uh, all right, thanks yeah. so much. Uh, up next. Thanks so much, Mike. Now on to the newspaper headlines, starting with this day newspaper. It says here, Buhari at UN General Assembly canvasses international material support for anti-corruption war. That's the main headline. It also says here, Amosun faults data by finance ministry, NBS, FIRS, on VAT contributions, says Ogun is the second highest contributor to VAT. We also have here, federal government targets economic growth rate of 7% by 2020. EFCC recovers 409 billion Naira, that's $70 million in eight months. All that on the cover of this day. On the cover of The Guardian, we have uh, Buhari asks UN to dialogue with North Korea over nuclear weapons. Nigeria will protect democracy under my leadership, says Buhari. And then Nigeria's debt profile to rise with new issues. Lagos tops lists of debtor states. All on the cover of The Guardian this morning. On the vanguard, we have the main headline. Nigeria's <clears throat> foreign debt hits $15.05 billion in June, according to the National Bureau of Statistics here as domestic debts stand at 14.06 trillion naira. Private sector operators warn on debt profile. Inequities within societies root causes of instability, according to Buhari. You can read up a bit more about that on page eight. And we have here federal government moving to block IPOB sources of funding, according to Lai Mohammed. That's on page 30 of the Vanguard. And then on the cover of The Nation, we have the headline, Consultant Admits $3 Million Governor's Contract Fake. And then also, um, IPOB Crisis Bigger Than Boko Haram. And then uh, finally, on the cover of The Nation, Nigeria's faith in democracy remains unshaken, says Buhari. 
And that's it on the headlines for this morning. The headlines are proudly supported by Dettol. Be 100% sure. And of course, we'll go on another commercial break. And when we return, I will be speaking right here with Wally Rubber. Welcome back. Uh, Akinwale Shodari, popularly known as Wale Rover, is one of Nigeria's most sought after dancers. He's also an instructor with over 15 years experience in the industry. Uh, Wale's art has brought him uh, international exposure as well as uh, a revered position in many of Nigeria's dance institutions and shows. And of course, it's a great pleasure to have Wale join us. Now, you were here earlier with us and uh, it was so much uh, fun looking at you dancing with Mike. Uh, yeah. Amazing. Now, when one watches you, yes. uh, when you dance, and of course when you teach dance, yes. uh, one can't help but wonder if it's an innate thing. Is dance a talent or something you learn? That's always an argument yeah. that you, know, you, you find people having. You know, with like every other thing, you, know, you could have um, you know, like an innate ability, but mastering it, then you know turns to you then learning it so you can have people say oh they've been playing football since you know it's natural talent but yeah. for you to be a master of you know that thing you have to learn it mm. so for some people yeah it comes easier and some have to you know you know study but if you want to be a professional and do all that you do as far as dance is concerned there has to be a combination of both yeah. okay so for someone like you who's been doing dance for i'm sure more than 15 years i mean yeah. we yeah. just put 15 years there <laughs> Um, how do you? How does dance evolve for you? Because some of the don't, some of the dance steps you were doing just now. I mean, you you did some galala, uh -huh. which is like some 10, 15 years ago, yeah. and then you brought even more contemporary dance into yeah, it. How yeah. do you? How do you catch up with what's happening around you? Okay, let me say for me, my style naturally, yeah, you know, it's, sometimes it's good to you know go with the trend, but I just create basically. It's 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 about movement. It's saying, for instance, now. I, I learned to, to write. And when the desire comes to write, I pick pen and paper and what, whatever comes to my head, I, you know, I put out there. The same way with my movements when I'm creating and choreography, it's, it's as the, you know, the song or whatever it is that I'm producing at that time you know, inspires the movement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have the place for all the you know, dances that are, that are in vogue or whether it be 15 or 20 years ago, but yeah. it's timeless. Mm -hmm. So whether it was Galala or Suave 20 yeah. years ago, you know, or the uh, uh, Millie Rockin' of, you know, recent, uh, yeah. dance is dance. Yeah. So talking about um, interpretation of dance, yes. there's something that you did recently, the yeah. video called Fearless, yes. which is something like unprecedented, nobody has seen anything like that. Yeah. And you used it to interpret a lot of things happening around us in Nigeria now. Very Can true. you just go a little bit into that? All right. Okay. Basically, uh, what I wanted to do, like you said, unprecedented. Um, nobody's ever done it before. And the idea was to then create dance content by dance professional. Mm. Not necessarily, you know, most of the time when you see a dancer, it's in a music video. Yeah. So why can't dancers put out their own work? So I thought to myself, you know, let's get the... Um, uh, original music, you know, that was Kobam's Yeah, DD. so you worked with Kobam's yeah, yeah. and I, yeah. And I thought to myself, for me, because everything always has to have a positive vibe or some message to it. Mm -hmm. So I said, I want to put this visual up, but at the same time, I want to use it to um, talk about situations in the country. So basically, it's a, the message there is, you know, even in the face of all the kidnap and uh, bad news and um, call to us and everything, yeah. I, am, I am Nigerian and mm -hmm. I will face, you know, that fear. So... For me, it was my way of then, you know, giving back to our everyday cry, yeah. but in the way I know how to. Hmm. I mean, that's deep because, I mean, when you're talking about um, expressing your talents and, yeah. you know, people think it's just, okay, well, if I do it through music yes. or if I write a rap song, yeah. but here you are doing it with dance. Yeah. How do you transfer this skill mm. to like a younger generation, especially when it comes to interpretation? Because a lot of times people think, um, when young people think about dance, mm. they think about the in thing, yeah. what's going on exactly. in the clubs, what, exactly. you, what you're catching exactly. up with in the music videos. Exactly. But here you are going in another direction. Mm. So how do you transfer that mentality to, um, to the younger generation? We have to, it has to be from the very top down where, you know, we inculcate, you know, the arts into schools properly. Mm. 
I, I run a program where I teach, you know, dance in part of some, some schools as part of the curriculum. Hmm. I call it creative development. So basically, some of those students, little kids, they know from the very onset that, you know, dance is a tool for you to use, you know, as broadly as you can to speak, you know, emotions, to talk about things that are, you know, that are very, very pertinent. Hmm. Not necessarily, oh, music is just for me, I be dance is just the, when I go to the party and everything. And, and th that's just some schools. But if we, you know, as a nation can inculcate that, let them know, let, let, let's have arts in schools. Mm. Let's, le let's bring dance education to schools and teach um, these young ones proper values as it relates, not even just dance, every other, you know, facet of our existence. Mm. And, y you know, you're, you're right, you know, because the young generation, they are, the speed at which they are moving now is like mm -hmm. everything is uh, yeah. microwave, microwave, you know. So, yeah, I, I, I feel that that's the best way, you know, put it in the curriculum, put it in the school system, put yeah. it in the education. You know, don't see dancers. Some people see dancers, oh, it's just a hobby. It's something you do when you, every, every other thing has yeah. failed. <laughs> no, you know. So I, was, I was actually going to go in that direction yeah. uh, when, when you started saying that don't see dancing as, as a hobby. Yeah. Because how do you move from the art of dancing mm. into the trade of dance where you actually start making money yes do, do i have to wait um, 15 years like wally roba <laughs> and have that kind of experience yeah. or um how do i make money yeah well th there are many ways <clears throat> for instance now <clears throat> if you learn dance you can be a dancer you can be a choreographer you can be an instructor like i said to you, you have people that if, if you're teaching in schools as extracurricular activity yeah that's money mm. you're performing in shows or in um, theater, we have lots of theater productions now, Saro, yeah. Waka, all those things. Mm -hmm. You're a paid, you know, dancer. You can then, you know, judge reality shows and everything. And this, um, the video is for me another way where it's trying to break into that system where um, another source of income is provided for dancers because yeah. you're buying my content. Mm. You know, so it's for instance, the way musicians make money, you download, the uh, service provider pays yeah. you for mm. exactly the same way. And it's, 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 a, it's then down to how much do you believe in what you do enough to then present it where people can then look at it and say, I'll give you money for this. Mm. That's, is that I think most of the time people are lazy with things that look like they are mundane and just ordinary. Mm. If you can push it, you know, there's so many levels to dance that you can, you know, you can push yourself. And you know, why not make money? It, it, it doesn't have to take you 15 years. You know. <laughs> All right, so um, 1,000 shows later, yeah. um, years have gone, mm. and here you are still doing your thing. Yeah. Um, what's the future like for you and also the future of dance? What, 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 are the kind, what are the things that you're seeing happening, especially with artificial intelligence coming up? Yeah. Uh, a lot of things are going to be simulated mm. uh, with computer-generated imagery. So how, how, how's this going to work? To, to tell you the truth, you know, as, as it were, everybody is basically just a, you know, you're almost like, you know, what's the, how is the future going to alter some yeah. of the things? For me, you know, something, you say something, you know, you know just like dance, dance and music is life. Mm. You can never actually get rid of that yeah. because, you know, movement is dance. You know, the choreographing sometimes, you know, say, oh, sit down there, do your hand like this. When the camera says, do this, you're yeah. dancing, mm. you know. And it's a constant thing. And for anything, the ability to evolve, you know. Now, this thing you're watching and everybody's saying, oh, fantastic, you know, unprecedented, I love it. It's, it, it, you don't know how much, <laughs> <laughs> how much time and effort went yeah, into it. It took to, you know, to get here. Mm. But my point is, if we all can sit down, it was a case of, Okay, everybody is going this way. Mm. Let me open this door and look, you know, and, and try and see what I can pull out of there. Mm. And that idea was, you know, um, um, brought to life. The same way, we need to st always, you know, keep on reading. I never stop reading. I never stop learning more, trying to evolve, trying to, you know, you always want to look at something. Is there any way I can squeeze this a bit more to mm. get, you know, better from it? And that's it. We always just need to keep on evolving and learning. You can't stay on one spot. You need to just push the boundary every time. And if you realize these days, anything that, you know, that is unique and different, it will stand you out. Yeah. Yeah. You're consistent at it. You know, people will like it. it 
say, for instance, I'm, I, you know, there's a particular song. It's not a song. It's not, there's no even word script or whatever it is. Yeah. And <laughs> you, you are, you are, you are thinking, how is this thing getting it's just so the much? Uniqueness that you know, yeah, gets it's people's uniqueness attention. because yeah. nobody's heard it before. Mm. They, they don't understand it. And when people don't understand, they gravitate yeah. towards. Oh, let's move closer. Let's understand it. And that's the same way. So for me, I see people are willing to work hard. I see the dance industry and the you know dance movement just you know evolving as we go along. Wow, amazing, amazing. Well, it's, uh, it's great to have you on the show. I mean, I'm sure that um, while you were doing that stuff with Mike, I actually still, um, I'm still learning how to dance <laughs> being on the Wake Up Nigeria. So I'm sure you're going to come another time and, and teach yeah. me some of those moves yeah. uh, that you were making. Yeah, well, there's a show on 1st October. You can come and just, you know, watch and have fun. Yeah. yeah. Thanks so much, man. Wale mm. Roba mm. joining us. Now, of course, uh, as much as we would love to um, dig into the person of Wale Roba even further, we have to go... Um, and of course, uh, we're going to give you styling tips for your hair after this short break.